in this portion of Isaiah, we have these encouraging, comforting themes of God trying to invite people back into his presence, trying to paint for them a picture of all the good that he has to offer. Let's read some of the verses that we have here. Verse 1, Ho, everyone that thirsteth cometh ye to the waters, and ye that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. Remember the context for the ancient Israelites around 700 B.C., where they're surrounded by enemies, and the Assyrians have been trying to assault them, and there's been death and destruction. The, Assyri the, the Israelites are worried, like, when will we ever experience the promise of God? And Isaiah speaks on behalf of the Lord, reminds them, you will have these blessings. God will give you all the good things of the land. There's also this forward thinking about Jesus. When he comes, he provides all these blessings that when we partake of Jesus, we will never thirst more. We will never hunger more. So there's multiple meanings of these verses, both for Isaiah's day, as well as for the time of Jesus, and for our day, if we accept Jesus. Verse 2, Why do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. I see a connection here to sacrament. Why would I spend my entire life giving my life away to, fulfill, to fill my body with physical things when I could take the time on a weekly basis to fill my soul with the flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, symbolically at sacrament. Verse 3, Incline your ear, and come unto me, here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. This is significant. God doesn't make simple, short promises that just last for a short time. He makes everlasting covenants, and he's telling people, just like I gave an everlasting covenant to David, that his sure, my sure mercies would be with him, that there would always be a Davidic king culminating in Jesus as the great Davidic king, the great anointed Messiah. We too, God wants to give the same blessings to us, an enduring legacy. And this comfort that Isaiah is expressing was deeply comforting to his people. And we see that comfort fulfilled in Jesus. And if we turn to Jesus, we have access to the eternal covenant that we will have God's enduring mercies. It comes through Jesus. That's what Isaiah is trying to uh, convey to us. Let's turn to chapter 56. This one's a really interesting chapter because the theme is temple worship. And what seems to be going on, well, what we do know is in the ancient world, for the ancient Israelites, only certain people had access to the temple. And Isaiah seems to be saying there'll be a future day when temple accessibility will be expanded to more people who in the ancient past may have been disallowed because of certain physical characteristics they had or disabilities or whatever it might be, that God is now saying in a future day, all who are righteous, no matter their ethnicity, their background, their gender, all are welcome into the temple if they are righteous and if they're on God's path. That's the main theme. Let's take a look at a couple of verses. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment, means live the laws of God, and do justice, for my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, and keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. So one of the ways that we prepare to be worthy to enter the temple is by keeping the laws of God as revealed to Moses and subsequent prophets or modern day prophets. And one thing in particular that Isaiah was teaching was to keep the Sabbath day holy. I'm going to go on to verse 7 and 8 now. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house should be called a house of prayer for all people. Again, you remember anciently, only Jews were allowed to go to the temple, and among those, it was only men who really got to go in, and then it was a priest who got to go into the holy spot, and then only one priest into the Holy of Holies. God is saying in a future day, which is now our day, everybody is welcome in to the Holy of Holies, the celestial room of the temple, if they're willing to abide by my law. No one's excluded if they're of a different ethnicity, or a different race, or a different language. Anybody who's willing to keep the law of God is welcome into God's temple. 
I find that extremely comforting. We have this portion of Isaiah, like chapters 40 to 66, is all about God comforting his people and painting a picture of the salvation that's available to everybody who is willing to walk on God's path. And I find that deeply encouraging. 